Question 1 from Section 2 of the 2019 National 5 Physics SQA exam. A quadcopter is a drone with four rotating blades. In a race, the quadcopter is flown along a route from point A to point E as shown in the diagram. The diagram is not to scale. Now for two marks, we're asked to do a scale drawing or otherwise to determine the magnitude of the resultant displacement of the quadcopter from point A to point E. Now remember the displacement can be found quite simply as follows. If you start here at A, your displacement is where you are from your final point. So that's really the displacement there which we're looking for. And we have to do that with a scale diagram. So that's our final displacement. So on a piece of paper, we must come up with a scale. So the scale I'm going to use is to fit 16 metres onto my piece of exam paper or, or notebook. So I'm going to use the following. I'm going to say that one centimetre on my notebook or piece of paper will represent two metres in the diagram. And that's the scale I'm going to stick with. So I go through my diagram and I change the 16 metres and the 11 metres, the 4 metres and the 6 metres into the actual distance or length I'm going to put into my notebook or onto my piece of paper. So 16 metres will be transferred into 8 centimetres because we know that 1 centimetre is going to stand for 2 metres. 11.0 11 .0 metres we're going to make that be 5.5 according to our scale, 5.5 centimetres. Remember, one centimetre stands for two metres. The four metre mark length in a diagram, we can change that into, in fact, two centimetres because we know that in our scale, two centimetres will become four metres. And this one here will be three centimetres. So we now have all our lengths of vectors which we can put down on a piece of paper and we use a ruler. So we start off by making a point here. There's our point which we're going to be starting with. That's point A where we start off. And we use our ruler. So we have to grab a ruler and grab a ruler across, put it there like that. And we have to measure out a vector exactly 8 centimetres. So there we go, we draw a line like that and we're out to 8 centimetres. Then we turn our ruler around. And we can turn the ruler in this way, sorry. And move our ruler to this position. And we now draw in 5.5 centimetres. So we draw in 5.5 centimetres. So 5.5 is going to get us to about there. We'll just make it a little bit longer. And that's just done the vector B to C. So we'll fill these in as we go along. So that's A to B and that's B to C vector. Then we have to change our ruler again. And we have to swap it around so that it's going to be in this position. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to measure off a distance of onto the zero of two centimeters. So our next vector will be two centimeters along like that. And finally, just move that up a wee bit so as we're buying on there. There we go. And finally, our final vector, which is going to take us from D to E. So that's going to be position D. And our final vector has got to be 3 centimetres. So we swap our ruler around again. Uh, bring up this position here. So it's 90 degrees. Sorry, 90 degrees. Our ruler's perfect, perfect position. And we're going to come up by 3 centimetres. So we'll put a mark on there and come up 3 centimetres. And there's our diagram. And that's it, complete. We can move it over there. And we can then label that as follows, A, B, C, D. And there's our final part of the journey, which is E there. So our resultant displacement is from the start all the way down to the finish, which is that point there. And it's usually denoted by a line, a vector, 
with two arrows like that to show you the resultant displacement. And we can take our roller now and we can measure what that's going to be. So if I can just spin the roller around again to that position. Now I'll be a bit out because of the roller shape on the screen but to the best of my ability I can see that the resultant is going to be about 6.5 centimetres. So the resultant here is going to be 6.5 centimetres on the scale drawing and therefore that means that the length of the vector has got to be 13 metres in real life. So the displacement really is 13 metres. So we now can put down the magnitude of the vector and the magnitude here, uh, the resultant vector, has got to be 13 metres. Now the second part of the question is going to ask us the following. It's going to say by scale drawing or otherwise determine the direction of the resultant displacement of the quadcopter from point A to point E. So that must mean we must take a north line as shown and we must find that angle from the north line to here to give us the direction. Remember a vector has got magnitude which we just found out but to fully describe it it needs to have a direction and that's going to be the angle measured from north. So all we have to do on our scale diagram is draw in a north line so I'll just put a north line in like that as best I can and then take my protractor and place the protractor with the centre of it at the starting point like that there. So if I redraw the angle this is going to be 0 degrees, 90 degrees. I come round here and I can see that I've just got between, it looks like 114 degrees. So that angle in there looks like it's going to be 114 degrees when it's measured, 114 degrees. So to fully describe that, then we have to say that the magnitude is 13 metres and it's at an angle of 114 degrees from north and that's us fully described the vector which has been answered in part 1 and part I and 2. Question 1 part B. The quadcopter takes 32.5 seconds to complete the race. Determine the average velocity of the quadcopter over the whole race. Now you go to your data sheets and you can see your data sheet there and you look down to see the average velocity and the displacement equation and there it is there, circled and that's the equation we're going to use so the equation we're going to write down is that S, the displacement, which we're talking about is equal to the average velocity multiplied by the time so therefore we're looking for the average velocity so average velocity is going to equal to displacement divided by the time. Be very careful here, it's the displacement which stands for S. So we know from our previous question that we worked out the displacement to be 13 metres on a bearing of 114. And we're told also now that the time which it took to undergo this displacement is going to be 32.5 seconds. So everything's all set up for us, so therefore the average velocity is going to be displacement, which is 13 metres, divided by the time of 32.5 seconds. And we do that in our calculator, we get 0 0.4 metres per second. So that's its average velocity, but remember, to completely describe a vector, you must include its direction as well from north. So our true answer to that is the average velocity is going to equal to 0 0.4 meters per second at a bearing of 114. And that's to keep us completely describing the vector. A bearing of 114. We don't have to bother about the degrees as we already know what a bearing means. Question 1, Part C. A second quadcopter completes the race at an average speed of 1.25 metres per second. The distance travelled by this quadcopter during the race is 37 metres. Determine the difference 
in the times taken by the quadcopters to compete or to complete the race. So this time we're dealing with a distance and a average speed. So the equation we're going to use is that one shown there. Distance is equal to average speed times time. So we can put that down like that. That's the equation we're going to use. Distance is equal to average speed times the time. So therefore, if we're after the time, the time is going to be equal to the distance divided by the average speed. So what is the distance travelled by this quadcopter? The distance travelled by it is going to be 37 metres. The average speed is going to be 1.25 metres per second. And therefore we have to find the time. So just plugging in the equation we get time is equal to 37 0.0 meters divided by the average speed which is 1.25 meters per second and we're going to get a time of 29.6 seconds so that's the time it took there now it's asking you for the time difference between the two copters we know from our previous uh, calculation or information is that the quadcopter took a time of 32.5 seconds therefore the time difference between the two journeys the time difference is just simply equal to the time it took for the first journey which we know was a time of 32.5 seconds and we have to take away our 29.6 seconds and we get an answer of 2 Point nine seconds. Now be very careful here because in the second part of the question we're talking about distance. So you have to use the appropriate equation for that one. So that is the time difference between the two journeys, 2.9 seconds. Question 1 part D. After passing point E, the quadcopter hovers at a constant height. Describe how the overall lift force provided by the four rotating blades compares to the weight of the quadcopter. Well, as a quadcopter there, you can see that it's hovering. It's neither moving upwards or downwards. Therefore, it's not accelerating upwards and it's not accelerating downwards. So we have the weight of the quadcopter, which we represent by the downward vector there. And that's counteracted by the lift force vector, which acts like that. Now we're asked to describe uh, or compare the difference between the lift force and the weight. Well, all we have to say for us is we bring the two together, you can see that the size of the weight force is equal to the lift force, but they're acting in opposite directions. Mm -hmm.